<clears throat> hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, May 30th, 2022. Um, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm a little bit uh, nasally. Um, I've been uh, actually, I've been battling COVID for the last week. Um, it hasn't really been a battle. It's just been a really, really, really bad cold. Um, uh, I, I refer to it as a cold on steroids. Um, yeah, I haven't had a cold like that ever. It, it, it did suck. It was not fun, but, um, I'm on the mend. I tested uh, positive actually last Tuesday and, uh, today is, uh, Monday. So, um, it's been almost a week. Um, I don't know if you can tell you also it's, I'm sweating like crazy. It's hotter than heck. Um, it's around 30 degrees and it's, uh, it's almost quarter to eight at night and it's still pretty humid but anyway um i want to talk to you about um issues i've been having with my setup um my mount uh the guiding uh, the auto guiding hasn't been hasn't been great um i've been fighting getting you know under an arc minute uh of uh of total rms um, that's my total error um, for the mount in the uh, in the right ascension and declination. Um, my declination has been the part that I've been fighting with. Um, I thought I had it figured out because I transitioned from a DSLR to a dedicated astronomy camera, and I was balancing it perfectly, and I didn't take into account that my DSLR was. Um, it was uh it's heavier than the dedicated astronomy camera and when i was guiding my declination so the graph would be you know going like this and then all of a sudden the declination would just drop right off the graph and then i'd get i'd get really I'd, I'd get crappy images um so say if i was doing a three minute exposure that three minute exposure i would be toast it'd be gone um i'd have to throw it out but um but so I kind of figured if I left it, if I left the scope a little back heavy in the declination axis, that would fix the uh, the problem. Actually, a friend of mine um, came onto that. Uh, he had that idea, and um, it's worked, but um, not as well as I'd liked. Um, I'm still I'm still trying to struggle with um, getting that total RMS under a minute, and sometimes. Dep and I and I didn't mark it. I didn't mark where it was because when we first did it, it was just kind of a rush setup in the dark, and and I, I set it up. We made it back heavy, and sure enough, it it, it worked. And I was getting you know zero zero point seven arc seconds of total RMS on average. So it was it was under one. So uh, but I I've yet to be able to to replicate that uh, that success but uh, so tonight what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, I'm going to be mucking around with that and I'm also going to be collimating my telescope um, my my scope is really out of out of collimation so even though my stars are in focus they're still blurry because they're still a they when a, when a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is out of collimation even though you're in focus, you're not in focus. Your stars are going to be egg shaped um, a little bit, and they're all facing the same way. That 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 shape is all going one way throughout my entire star field. Um, as as it goes out from the center out to the sides, it's um it, those stars are the same. They're the same shape. So. I'm going to try and work on that tonight. I'm also going to try and photograph some meteors tonight because apparently we're going to have a pretty good meteor shower tonight or so so they hope. Um, what What's happening tonight is, is we're going through a comet's debris that has broken up um, as it's going through its orbit. And um, <laughs> lots of motorbikes out. But, um, but anyway... Yeah, so the Earth is going to be going through that cometary debris of it being broken up. 
So hopefully we should be getting quite a light show tonight. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed because last time I was out and I was photographing, I think it was the Perseid meteor shower, I think. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't grab any, I wasn't able to get anything. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to check my, uh, I probably won't get going here for a little while. I'm going to wait for the sun to go down and, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, I don't think I'm going to be, uh, doing anything too serious tonight. Uh, imaging wise, I just want to see if I can work out these, uh, work out these, these issues a little bit. So, um, I'll have you back out with me here in a little while. And um, I'm going to take you along with me while I try and collimate my telescope. Um, yeah, I'm going to be coming out here in a little more, a little while more. And um, hopefully we can get this, uh, this telescope collimated. So hopefully you'll join me and, uh, you know, come along for this ride and see if we can, see if we can knock these, uh, these problems out of the park. All right, we'll talk to you in a bit. It's about uh, 20 after 11 on uh, Monday the 30th. Anyways, um, I'm just out here. I got uh, I got my scope all set up and everything. I got my camera over there taking pictures of where the meteor shower should be, which is known as the radiant. Um, anyways, um, I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, I'm just in the process here of collimating my scope. So, um, yeah, I'm just uh, going to try and figure out how, how I can switch this camera around. Um, uh, it doesn't look like I can do it while I'm recording, so I might have to stop it here and flip it around so you can see the computer screen. Or actually, I can probably record the computer, I can probably record the computer screen, so um, maybe I'll do that. But anyways, um, I'll see you back at the computer here in a second. Okay, everybody, so what you're seeing on screen um, is the star Vega. It's in the constellation Lyra. And as you can see, it's not too badly out of collimation. I'm just going to try and make this a little bit brighter. I'm going to just stop the looping. I'm going to go a uh, gain of 200 and start the loop just to try and make it a bit brighter. Uh, nope, that's not going to do it. Okay, let's go a thousand. I just want to be able to see it good. All right, there we go. Okay, now I don't know if that's fully the way I should make it, like out of focus, so I'm just going to make that donut a little bit bigger. see what that does okay maybe a little bit more okay I guess that's good enough um, you know what I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more uh, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get it yeah. Okay, so from what I can see is I'm not that too much out of collimation. So, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just getting notifications on my phone. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, I'm just gonna play around with this and see if I can uh, see if I can do this in real time while I have you on this, you know, while I'm recording this. But uh, I have to uh, I have to turn the laptop around. So let's do that. All right, and 
I'm gonna hate, I hate doing this in the dark, but I'll make that a bit brighter. Okay. Oh, no, no, I better not go that way. Okay, what you're seeing there, if you can hear me, is my finger. I'm putting it in the way of my corrector plane to find out what the fattest part of the donut is. And I believe I have to, I have to make the fattest part thinner. Actually, wow, that looks really good. I don't know what I need to really mess around with it all that much. Hmm. Got a bunch of bugs on it. Practically around my laptop. Okay, so let me get this in. is pretty close. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. Hmm. Wow. I have to say, uh, that is not it's not too shabby an image if I say so myself. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna try a little bit more. That looks as good as it's going to get, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <sighs> okay, I'm going to send it in the image again.
Yep, I think that's good. I think that looks nicely collimated. Alright, good stuff. That uh, didn't take too long. Now hopefully, it, now hopefully it stays. Okay, so I just turned my laptop around. You can't tell because I don't have my camera on. The reason I don't have my camera on is because you probably wouldn't see anything anyway. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to try not to edit this video as much as possible just to show you how long it takes to do a collimation. Um, but again, as you saw, this isn't really a bad collimation. It, it, it's, it, it was pretty well, it needed to be fixed a little bit, but I mean, it wasn't bad. So um, with that being said, I'm going to wrap this, uh, this part up and uh, I don't know, I might, uh, might put a filter in and I might, uh, I might image something. Uh, I might image the, image the Crescent Nebula again, or I might even go for the Tulip. Um, not quite sure. <laughs> not quite sure. But um, anyways, uh, if I do image something, I will come back and I will let you know what I image. All right. So uh, hopefully we'll talk to you here in a little bit. Okay, uh, so a few days have passed since uh, since I was out, and um, uh, uh, after I got after I got everything collimated, uh, my whole night went to crap. It went uh, it went from being collimated, and I was all giddy and happy and all that, and then it just it it all fell apart. Um, I tried to uh, go from Vega. I decided to try and see if I could get to the um, the Eagle Nebula, M16. And then my mount decided to um, basically take a crap. Um, it was, uh, I've, ha I've had it happen, but I've had this, this, this problem happen before um, where I slewed over to the Eagle Nebula or the target, whatever target I was imaging. And all of a sudden, um, I went to go plate solve and it did the it did the initial picture it plate solved it and then when it went to go do the correction my mount just did a complete 180 270 whatever it completely pointed the other way and it was pointing down at the ground um it was like i was in another hemisphere um it, it, it and no matter what i did didn't matter. I unplugged everything. I turned the mount off. I restarted the mount. I restarted my computer. I restarted the acquisition software that I was using and nothing worked. So at that point, I just gave it up as a bad job and I packed everything in and uh, I just left my camera running, uh, my DSLR. Um, and on that note, I didn't get anything either because I uh, that was a bust as well. There was, I, I couldn't see, I didn't capture anything. And I was out there almost from 10 30, 11 o'clock, um, just setting up my DSLR camera, uh, as opposed to collimating the, uh, my telescope, um, until about 1 2 o'clock. And I only saw two meteors and they weren't, they, they, they can happen just about anywhere, but I mean, they weren't where I was imaging. So I was unable to grab anything. Um, <laughs> these are the pitfalls of, of, of astronomy and astrophotography. Um, uh, am I disappointed? Yes. Um, but, you know, it, it's just stuff we have to work through. Uh, some things take longer than other things. And sometimes, sometimes you just find the fix like that. And it, it all works out. So, um... But I'm kind of thinking in, uh, I'm just in the process and thoughts of going in another direction with my astrophotography. Um, possibly, uh, possibly not using that one as much, um, being that it's so zoomed in and I'm really kind of really, really leaning towards wider field astrophotography. Um, you know, 
200 millimeters to say 400 millimeters or 300 millimeters but um that's for another story and um i'm not going to bore you with the details that is a uh that's a uh a decision and a struggle that i'm going to be making um but anyway um yeah i'm 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 gonna keep continue bringing content uh whenever i have it available um i am going to try and show you the the side of uh, astrophotography that some or a lot of youtube channels don't bring you which are the the, the failures the troubles you know um there are a lot of great youtube channels out there um but they don't show a lot of them don't show the uh the the, the troubles that they have or you know some of them just include bloopers and stuff like that which is great hey you know what the, the these channels are awesome and i've learned a lot from them myself but i mean i want to be able to bring you the real side and um um the real side of astrophotography and the troubles that you have on, on a day-to-day -day or night-to-night -night basis but in short um i just wanted to say thank you for everybody that stayed this long i know it was a little bit of a longer video um and i try not i try not to edit as much as the the collimation as as i could um and one thing i forgot to do is show you where the collimation screws are on my Schmidt cast grain so um, I'm probably gonna I'm gonna put a picture up uh, right now and um, these are the collimation screws that I was messing with to get the uh, to get the secondary mirror into collimation all right but anyway um, so I'm gonna wrap this video up again if you stayed this long uh, I thank you very much uh, if you found the information in this video um, educational, if you learned anything, I, I would appreciate a thumbs up. I'd also appreciate a, um, a subscribe. And uh, on that note, I'll catch everybody in the next video. And uh, thank you and uh, clear skies. See you later.